I have to leave for work in like 10 minutes. I wasn't planning on making a video this morning, but then the video cards guys over here have leaked some really important info about Intel's upcoming Alder Lake. Now this will be announced very soon, possibly even later today, question mark. Um, but we seem to have it early here, so I might as well get this info out to you guys right now. Links to everything I talk about will be in the description to the video. So here's the big thing. It seems like the folks at Video Cards have gotten a hold of maybe some press deck slides without having to agree to the NDA agreement, um, showing us both the final specs and the pricing of Intel's upcoming 12th gen chips, as well as their gaming performance. So let's jump into gaming performance right away. Let me Thanos snap myself out of existence. Ah, except for my voice, there's the 50-50, right? Anyway, so what do we got? So again, this is uh, definitely coming from Intel. So this is what we'll expect to see later on in one of their presentations. So this is putting the uh, 12900K up against the Ryzen 5950X in some gaming performance workloads. And they're also up against the 11900K, and that's in white here. So Team Red's in red, Team Blue's in blue, and uh, white is also Team Blue, but it's the old one, okay? <laughs> now, here's what's interesting. We do see them admitting that in certain games, they're either parity, uh, you know, basically equal, or there's even a slight loss for the 12900K, and that's in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. However, in the rest of the games, we're seeing a performance advantage for the 12900K. Now, I'm just gonna go out and say, yeah, I certainly hope so. The 12900K is literally a year newer of chip, okay? Um, so I would definitely hope that it's, it's beating it. <laughs> um, anyway, but it's still good to see that that's actually happening since we'd seen so much stagnation from Intel for so long. Anyway, so we're seeing a 8% gain in F1 2021, 11% in Age of Empires 4, 14% in uh, Far Cry 6, Hitman 3 is 15%, Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord 16%, Grid 2019 20%, and Troy Total War Saga at 30%. But look at that one, guys. Look, in this one, this is one of the weird games where the 11900K, well, I guess it's not that weird, but... Um, that's one of the games that, that where the 11900K is already beating the 5950X, so I think that's why we're seeing, seeing the big jump here. And again, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one where the 5950X had kind of an outsized lead against the 11900K. Uh, F1 2021, though, is interesting because we did see the uh, 5950X have a healthy lead over the 11900K, but then the... Um, 12900K is jumping up and beating it. Now, I wanna point something out. I don't know if in their official announcement they'll say this, but it's not telling us what RAM is being used here. Okay, and that could be a big deal because we know that one of the big things about the 12900K, let me pop myself back into existence. Boom. One of the big things about the 12900K is that it supports DDR5. So I'm very curious if they're, to get these results, are taking advantage of some really high-end DDR5. I'm hoping they didn't need to in order to get this performance because here's one of the main, main concerns I would have for people looking to, uh, you know, get these chips. We're seeing articles like this. DDR5 memory will be up to 60% more expensive than DDR4 initially and will take two years to reach price parity. And that's, again, article will be linked in the description, so I'm not going to jump into all the details on that. But that's one of the big things, is that with a, with a platform launching for DDR5, yes, it'll have DDR4 support, but I'm very curious, is what I'm saying, is did this performance jump require the DDR5? If not, cool. Then I'm actually curious, well, does DDR5 give you an even better jump? Neat. It'll be interesting to test. Although I've got to say, guys, we just want my quick thoughts on DDR5. I think for gaming, it's just not going to be worth the price jump. Unless you're building just the ultra high-end system where you literally buy all of the best parts and you push it to overclock everything just for fun and you're just you're not looking for a return on the dollar. Um, you're looking for just the best possible performance regardless of price. Cool, get yourself some DDR5. I think other than that, your money would be better spent on a better GPU, followed by a better CPU if you already have the best GPU, and then followed by maybe even better cooling, <laughs> and then maybe the uh, getting the DDR5. That, that, that's just my thoughts. Anyway, so uh, the other thing we want to talk about here is that this, again, is coming from Intel. So what games did they pick? We can already see that there are at least some games, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the 5950X still has the advantage. And the fact that Intel's admitting to even one of them here uh, would lead me to believe that there's more of them and that they're just going to 
obviously choose a selection of games that makes it look like the vast majority of them are favoring the 12900K. Now, like I said, I expect the 12900K to have a lead here. It's a year newer chip. It better, if it didn't actually have better gaming performance, that would be a huge cause for concern. Um, but anyway, so just saying this is from Intel and you've got to take that into account when you think about the, the selection of games. And like I said, it doesn't state the RAM used. Now, how about the other chips? This is just the 12900K. I don't know if the announcement later today will talk about any other chips, but we have seen a bunch of leaks. For example, uh, we're seeing leaks saying that uh, the uh, i5-12600K is doing very well up against the 11600K, right? So the previous gen uh, Intel chip, at least 50% uh, higher performance in multi-threading. And we've seen leaks saying that the 12600K is up to 50% uh, up to faster than Ryzen 5 5600X. And um, so you again, I'll link these in my description, but the thing about these is these are leaks Right, and these could even be based on things like engineering samples, all of that. So you do want to take all of that with a grain of salt, but I am expecting these to be good. Now, the main thing I'm excited about with this launch is what it might do to pricing. And that's where the other slide here comes in. So we also apparently have the pricing plans here. Thanos, okay, right? Um, and this, okay, oops, ah, wrong button. Click the button, there we go. Okay, so. We apparently have the 12900K, which again, this is giving us the official specifications with all of our boost clocks and turbo frequencies. And I don't wanna just read this slide, so just like look at that for yourself. Remember the biggest deal here that you, in case you haven't been following this closely, is that Intel's going with a big little design where they have performance cores, that's more like the big full cores that we're used to, but now they're also adding in some efficiency cores which aren't as powerful and don't offer hyper-threading. So I'm really curious, by the way, how that's gonna play out in all software. I wonder if there's games that that doesn't support well. I believe I didn't pull up the article, but I think I saw articles that like some anti-cheat programs were having issues with this, uh, and hopefully that'll be fixed in time for launch, question mark. So I, I am curious about how that design plays into actual software support and how it'll work out in, in things that aren't uh, maybe taking advantage of that very well. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. So the 12900K is coming in at 589. The 12900KF, if you're not sure what the F means, that means it doesn't have the integrated graphics chip, is coming in a bit cheaper at 564. We're seeing the 12700K coming in at $409, the 12700KF. And again, notice that the main, main difference here is you're losing some of the efficiency cores, right? You still have the eight performance cores, but you're dropping from eight to four efficiency cores and the F version loses the integrated graphics and again that's dropping down to 384. The 12600K which drops down to six performance cores from eight keeps four efficiency cores from, from the uh, 12700 version right. Um, that one is coming in at 289 and if you lose the integrated graphics chip for the KF model you're coming in at 264. Now what do I think about the pricing? I was hoping it would be a little bit more aggressive, but this isn't as bad as I think it could have been. The fact that like, if these performance results are accurate, um, we could have seen Intel get really greedy and maybe price these like at parity with the 5950X until AMD actually launched their, their follow-up, okay? So the fact that they didn't is good. What I don't like is the fact that I believe this is actually higher pricing per chip at performance tier than the previous 11th gen Intel chips. Um, I think the, uh, the article here actually mentions that. So they're saying that um, the $589 uh, for the 12900K is $50 increase over the 11900K's launch price, okay? And then that kind of follows down. We're seeing like, 10 US dollars more for each SKU compared to the 11th gen core series. The point is, compared to 11th gen, these are more expensive at the same tier levels, which I don't like to see. But at least it wasn't an even bigger increase because the main, the main reason I'm excited for this launch is 
hopefully to start c controlling the price. Like a, a lot of you guys who follow my channel know that I just bought a 5950X and no, I don't regret that decision because I think its performance is still gonna be absolutely fantastic and I've had it for the amount of time I get. I think that these are gonna be hard to get at launch, right? I think we're gonna see these selling out. You're also gonna need to get one of the, the motherboards that actually support this thing and who knows what the pricing is gonna be on that. And then like I said, if you want fully take advantage of this, you're paying for the expensive DDR5. So what I'm getting at here is there's a lot of people who could just upgrade to a 5950X on a platform that already supports it with RAM that already supports it rather than buying this. So I hope this does bring the 5950X and, and, and lower, right? 5900, the 5600. I hope all those prices come down. Um, but we'll see, because like I said, if these things are selling out, then there might not be a big reason to drop those prices. Although we have seen some prices come down at least a little bit on those already in anticipation of this. Like I said, I've got to get to work. So I'm interested in your guys' thoughts in the comment section. I'll quit rambling and I hope all of you have an excellent day.